Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And welcome to our sixth webinar. Our topic, the psychology of obesity. Now in our day-to-day -day lives, we all have anxiety, stress, daily hassles, frustration, helplessness, happiness, and several other emotions which are difficult sometimes for us to manage. And we have discovered over the centuries that eating gives us pleasure, joy, happiness. And if you were to look at it from a scientific perspective, it's related with the release of serotonin from the brain, the happy hormone perhaps. This comfort eating or emotional eating to alleviate stress and anxiety and depression causes its own problems. Obesity is one of them. Eating disorders, bulimia, where you perhaps eat too much and then have induced vomiting to reduce your calorie intake. Overeating or what we refer to as binge eating disorder results in frequently a distorted body image, poor self-esteem, reduced quality of life, and this entire cycle of stress and anxiety and eating in some ways to alleviate the misery and the consequent problems with obesity and body image frequently become an addiction. Binge eating disorder is an addiction. And we are very fortunate today to have with us our in-house clinical psychologist who offer 11 years, has spent seven of those 11 years dealing with addictions. Zobia, Ms. Zobia Amin, is a clinical psychologist. She got her, her degree in 2008 from Lahore in Pakistan. She has dealt with a whole spectrum of population, including adults, adolescents, geriatrics. She deals with problems relating to addiction and interpersonal relationships and intrapersonal relationships. She conducts workshops in parenting, stress, assertiveness, relationship management, and is a reviewer for the Journal of Counseling Psycho of Clinical and counseling psychology to talk to us about the relationship between the psych to talk out to talk to us about the psychological relationships of obesity. I present our very own Rack Hospital cl clinical psychologist, Ms. Zobia. Hi, good morning, everyone. 
So today we will be talking about psychology of body image, the mind-body connection. As we all know that uh, as a human being, it, it, not just one factor affects us. We talk about total well-being. And what is total well-being? It consists of our physical health, our emotional health, our uh, social health, our work-related health, and it can be further divided into like Bobia, physical health. Can we, uh, can we see you on the full screen? I mean, your slides. Dr. Wilku, is that on full slides? Uh, yeah, uh, no, actually, uh, Zobia ma'am, can you please uh, yeah. put it on the slideshow? Okay, sure. Thank you. Is it on slides? Yeah, uh, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now we talk about total well-being because uh, as a human being, our bio, our psycho, we are affected by bio, psycho, social, and spiritual aspects of our life. Now, if we see physical health and mental health, which is emotional health, they cannot exist without each other. If we are physically fine, but mentally we are going through stress or we are depressed or we are having anxiety, we couldn't perform uh, even though physically we are fit. And same way, if we are mentally healthy, there is no emotional problems going on, but physically we are not healthy. We won't be able to perform our duties or our life quality will be affected by it. So they both are interlinked. They are entities which are interlinked, but unfortunately they are dealt as two different things. Now, if we talk them because bio of our like hormones, our uh, brain that affects our emotions, our thinking, our behaviors and our beliefs. That's our emotional health. So to experience health and happiness, we have to work on it as a whole. We have to focus on physical health as well as as on mental health. Then total well-being just don't uh, have physical and mental health, but it also have to do with social connections, positive relationships, healthy relationship, not just with other people, but to our own self, like self-love, self-care, self-connection with our own self, knowing our own, knowing thyself and working on our strengths and weaknesses then uh, that relationships can be also used or utilized in our workspace. Then engagement and having a sense of person. Being a human being, if we have a sense of purpose or we have goals to achieve, we will be motivated to do them. But if we are not clear or unsure about our goals, our strengths and our weakness, or we are at denial of, of our strengths and weakness, we won't be able to do work accordingly. Now, the mind and body connection is interesting. And we all, as a human being, have experienced that mind-body connection. Like, for example, if uh, you're feeling anxious and you feel tightness in your stomach, that shows that there is mind-body connection. If you're angry, your legs start trembling. What's that? That show mind-body connection. Our emotions, our feeling, our perception, our experience affect our body. So physical health and emotional health are equally important. And there is link according to a, a, 
medical physician, he said, like, brain, if brain is our uh, hardware, then it affects our emotions, our feelings, our thoughts, which is our mind. So our brain has a great connection to our mind. And it affects the way we do things, the way we, we act, the way we think, but the way we believe. And similarly, if anyone has stress, what happens? Their immunity goes lower. Stress can uh, cause diabetes, can cause high blood pressure. Now, stress is our experience or our belief or our problems, how we uh, perceive the situation and deal with it. So it affects the physical health. Now, why do we need a positive mind-body connection? Because if we have a positive mind-body connection, it's easier to heal. If we, we uh, even in uh, researchers shows that CBT, cognitive behavior therapy, which is meant to change your thoughts, the way you perceive things, can change, actually change your brain and nervous system. They have found the changes because cognitive behavior therapy makes you think positive and it makes those connections in a way that you automatically start thinking positive about certain things. And the way you think or feel uh, affects what you do and vice versa. Thoughts, feelings, and mental attitude about your health can positively or negatively affect your body at a biological level. As I told you that CBT, like thinking positive, which is a um, clinical psychologist trains you on thinking positive, it actually changes your brain and nervous system. It, it changes the bio and chemistry of your body. Because your body sends chemical signals, which are hormones, neurotransmitter, in response to each of your thoughts, beliefs, and your experience or perception about yourself. Now, how to be more positive about mind-body connection? Become more aware. Be more aware about your thoughts, body, about your feelings, about your emotion. Be grateful of the blessings. Be grateful about your body, the hands, how, like how they help you get connected to your loved one, to hug them. Then your legs, which makes you walk in a beautiful, like, or in a garden, and be thankful to your body for each and everything you're enjoying in this world. Then positive self-talk is very important for positive mind-body connection. How, if you say, um, mostly what happens, people focus on uh, minor defects or uh, uh, my, uh, they, which are not even visible for or to others on themselves, like, oh, my nose doesn't look good. And this is a negative thought and that will affect their self-esteem. And then they will feel bad about it. And then it will become a vicious cycle. They will get stuck in it. So to break that vicious cycle, you have to talk positive about yourself. See positive things about how you are, who you are, how your body is. Be mindful about what you are doing. If you're eating, you're mindful about your eating, you will eat healthy, you will think like how this food is enjoyable for you. You won't feel healthy food is just to like, it's a, like to maintain your weight. You will feel the taste. You will, you, if you are mindful about your weight, you will feel the lightness. You will feel how relaxed you can be, how light you can be. Then relaxation exercises, which are also very important to keep you healthy. 
Now let's come to more specifically to your body. Now this, I really like this quote because it's very important. Your body can never be perfect enough if you are ashamed of moving. The body, that's your body, okay? And if you are ashamed of yourself, you will focus on small, tiny defects, which other even be able to notice and you will get obsessed by them. And then you will blame and have guilt feeling for those things. And that will make you perceive your body even worse. And uh, even if you're, look, each individual is different. We cannot have, we all cannot have the same body shape. We can be healthy, but body shape is not exactly same or which is promoted on the TV. We all have different bone structure. We have to consider ourselves, our body shape, and then we have to work according to it. Not feeling ashamed of it, accepting it, doing healthy exercise, healthy eating, but not comparing ourselves to other people. Because when you compare your body to other people, your body is not the same. Your lifestyle is not the same. Your eating habits are not the same. Your physical structure is not the same. Then if you keep comparing, that will make you feel ashamed and you won't accept your body or you won't accept this is your body is the place you live in. And you don't accept the place you live in. It is harmful. Now, what is a body image? Interestingly, Body image is just your mental presentation, mental presentation of, of how you feel you are. It's, it's not related to reality. It's not at all related to reality. And uh, that uh, mental presentation may not be as same as you actually are. It's the way you see how your own body is. It's, it's combine your thoughts, your feelings, and your beliefs about your body. For example, most of people focus on their specific body part, like uh, nose, legs, and they will be say, oh, my nose is too big for it. My nose is too big. And then they will start it becoming more negative about it. Like, oh, that means I look ugly. I look ugly, I shouldn't have full social connection. I shouldn't go and meet people. Then if, oh, my legs are too fat, they're they are no, not good. You, would, you get obsessed by your body. You just think about your body. And interestingly, if your body image, um, only slim, healthy people had, positive body image, it's, it's not true. Because many slim people even don't have positive body image. For example, the people with um, anorexia nervosa, they, they even though they, they are so skinny, they feel no, uh, there is a fat on my tummy, there is a fat on my leg. Oh, this, this, this is deformity, this is my flow. I cannot go out, I cannot meet people. And they stop eating entirely. They don't eat enough, which is required. And they will go through negative like health issues. Like they, they will have uh, uh, weak immunity. They, they, they will collapse. They will become unconscious. They will faint because their body don't have enough nutrition. And this is because they don't have positive body image in their mind. So, and if the body image was the case, then do all chubby people have negative self-image? No, no, that's not the case. Some people are happy with how they are. They focus on healthy eating, exercising, but they don't have any negative perception about their body image. The people who have negative perception about their image, you, you can see them going more often to uh, for cosmetic surgeries 
they will be like, I want my nose to be like very thin. Then they, they keep on modifying, but they never get satisfied. Why? Because they have negative. So it's very important to have a positive body image. Now, four, what are the four aspects of body image? The way you see is the perception of your body image. The way you feel is affected body image. Like I feel, some people say, I feel sad, I feel ugly, I feel, that's, that's your effective body image. Then the way you think about your body is your cognitive body image. The behavior you engage in a result of body image is behavioral body image. For example, if some people believe they are very uh, fat, in case of, um, again, anorexia nervosa, what they do, they stop eating. They keep on doing more and more exercise, stop eating. In case of bulimia nervosa, they eat, 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 and then they puke. They, they try to vomit. They use lexative, which is not healthy. So the behavior they engage in uh, as a result of their body image is uh, uh, the behavioral body image. Now factors influencing your body image is the culture. Some culture, they promote like, uh, like physically you should be this shaped. So people follow those, like they, they want to fit in because as a child, we are, uh, we, we are asked to, uh, to see for approvals, approvals from others. Even in schools, we are taught to have approval from others. So in the culture, uh, if uh, some people, if they say skinny is like uh, having zero figure size, they will feel that no one is going to approve them. Their confidence level go down. They, they start isolating themselves instead of continuing with the healthy way to dealing with like their body shape rather than uh, and working on their body image. Then you will find that those people have lower self-esteem, lower self-confidence. Even if they put a lot of makeup, they go for cosmetic surgeries, they don't feel happy about themselves. Why? Because they have negative body image. It's important to have positive body image to be confident. And to look good is very important because if you look good, you feel good. You have to focus on the positive uh, part of your like health. You have to uh, like work on those, enhance those to feel more confident than family values and attitude. Most of the family I have seen, they, they subconsciously bully their children. Like, oh, you're so chubby. You cannot move. You're so lazy. They, they just say it, they don't see how psychologically it can affect a child. And according to the researchers, eight to nine years of children, actually three years of children can start having body image issues. Three years, that's a very young age. They can start having body issues because their family are saying that they are chubby, they are fat. Even um, I have seen kids like four or five years when the, they're, there's going to be like a picture, family picture. They try to like hold their breath because they want their stomach to go inside. Why? Because they, they feel that they, they're not good enough. They, they don't get approval from their family that they are good enough. Then abuse and trauma change your body image. Like it's not related to actual body image. Like it's not like you will be fat or you will be skinny and you will be feeling that your body is not fine. Abuse or trauma tends to have negative perception about yourself. Why? Because in abuse or trauma, that was something uncontrollable in your life. 
what you want to do is you want to practice control. And where can you practice control? I'll stop eating. I'll have a positive body image. But what happens? You don't have positive body image. You have negative body image. That's why you, you control, you stop eating, you have aversion towards food. You have a hate relationship with your food. So, and in case of bulimia nervosa, you have love-hate relationship. You want to eat everything and then you hate yourself for eating it. And you have guilt feeling why I did it. Then physical activities. Physical activities are very important because it helps producing uh, happy hormones. It helps releasing happy hormones. If you're physically active, you feel good. You feel good in yourself because of the happy hormones. So it's very important to be physically active, to have positive body image. Then puberty can change the way you perceive your uh, body image because uh, you're changing, you're physically changing, you're emotionally changing. Then acceptance and rejection in relation to your body. If you accept your body, you will have a positive body image. If you reject it, you will have a negative body image. Now, what is positive body image and negative body image? Positive body image is you're more realistic about your body. Like if you know you need to reduce four kgs okay i'll i'll reduce four kg and i'll be fine because uh, you weigh yourself then you set the target and you achieve it that's positive body image yeah, like you work on it you know you can work on it and it's you your goal will be realistic then uh, you will be appreciating the way your body is, oh wow, I have reduced one kg, oh wow, and now I'm more, I feel more healthy, and I, I look better, or anything if you are overweight, in, in case you are overweight, and uh, you will be like, if, uh, because every body is different, you will be like, okay, I'm pear shape, I cannot go skinny on my leg than this, you will have realistic view about your and some people who have sports bone, sportsman bone, they're broad. They don't try to make themselves petite. They, they will be like, this is my target weight. I have to reach it and that's it. Then you will understand that what is healthy body and because healthy body comes in every shapes and size. Some people are tall, some people are short. Um, and according to your uh, physical health, you have different uh, weights. So you, uh, you will have a positive image, body image, and you will consider all of the things, and then you will work on yourself. You will be like, not just physically happy, like I look good, but you will be like, you will feel you are worthy, and uh, your worth doesn't based on like comparing your physical uh, physique to some other people, but in fact, how you are, how, how you feel about your health is more important. How, how happy you are, how, how, how much you have set your goal and you have achieved it. Now, the difference between negative body self image, they have unrealistic perception. Even if they're underweight, what they are going to think, oh my God, I have to reduce weight from my leg. Oh, my arms are too fat. I have to reduce. But if they weigh their them, themselves, they're underweight. And the doctors say, actually, you are underweight. Oh, oh, but you don't understand. I am underweight, but this area is not good enough. And they will keep doing exercises and they will keep doing things which are not healthy for them, but harmful for them. So they have negative body image. They have unrealistic perception about their body. They won't focus 
uh, on the things they can change uh, or uh, they will be only focusing on those things like their legs their arms they won't be focusing on their overall health like what what should be my weight what is my bmi how much i should achieve or how much i should reduce they won't be like concerned with the reality of their health then they will keep comparing their body with others. No matter the, what is their bone structure, they will keep comparing their body. And when you compare yourself with others, it's not a very good thing because every individual is different. You, everyone comes with their own unique strengths and weakness. And if they keep comparing themselves, they will feel low. They will feel demotivated. They, and then they will have guilt and shame about how they appear, like how they feel they appear. Actually, even if they are underweight, they don't feel underweight. They feel that their body is like disproportional. Their body is like, it's a shame for them. Now, Body image, mental health, and self-esteem, they are all interlinked. And it, it's kind of a vicious cycle which controls you. For example, I'll give you the example, like if mental health, you have, you say nothing ever works out. If I cannot, you, you start seeing things into negative, like into black and white. You don't focus on the gray area. There is not just a black and white in this world. There are many other colors. You just focus on black and white. Like, I cannot handle this problem. I must be a failure. You conclude, you conclude an extreme, at extreme level. And uh, if it's not perfect, it's total disaster. You see in black and white. You don't see like uh, gray shade, other shades. And then if you say, then you will be saying, I feel overwhelmed and low. I don't take a time out to take care of myself. That will make you feel bad. And this thoughts will affect your body image or your perception of your body. I don't like the way I look. I wish I looked more like other people. There's something wrong with me. Like, even if you cannot find any defect, you will say, no, no, still there is something wrong with my body. And how it will affect your self-esteem? You will say, I think I am, I'm not good enough. Some people will say, I look ugly. Other will say, like, other people look better than me. I should be able to do this. Thing. There must be something wrong with me if I can't do this. And then this uh, self-esteem their confidence grow. And that confidence again lead to another negative thoughts, another like problems. And then again, those negative thoughts will, they will focus on um, their, their uh, negative thoughts. They will uh, put on their body image. They will, they will perceive their body according to the negative thoughts. And those uh, body image will affect their self-esteem. For example, if um, if you say that I don't look beautiful, what will happen? You don't feel like going out. You don't feel like communicating to other people. Why? Because of the negative thought, because of the uh, negative body image. Like, oh, my nose is too big. I have to wear a mask. I have an acne. I should make wear mask. This lead to uh, low self-esteem. Why? Because we focus more than the defect and we get obsessed by that defect due to our negative thoughts. Now, what does negative self-image affects on mental health? It's increased the risk for depression and anxiety. Depression and anxiety, why? Because you're not taking your body image as it is in reality. So what will happen? You will set unrealistic goals. And when you set unrealistic goals, 
you are planning for the failure because you cannot achieve unrealistic goal. And when you cannot achieve them, you feel depressed, you feel demotivated, you feel hopeless, you feel helpless. And then anxious, like whatever I do, I cannot achieve it. Because it's not something wrong with your body. It's wrong with your goals. The goals you are setting are not realistic. So set realistic goals according to your body, according to your weight, which can be proved physically. Then they will start having eating disorders. How they will start eating more and then vomiting out or they will stop eating just doing exercising, which will result in their physical uh, problems. Then body dysmorphic disorder. What is body dysmorphic disorder? Basically, it's a minor defect like an acne or pimple, but in your mind, you see it as big as your face. Like you cannot see yourself, you can only see that acne. You can only see that pimple and you're no more yourself. It's more about that. Then you will have low self-confidence. You will engage in unhealthy eating, like comforting in uh, bloomia nervosa. You're eating unhealthy. You're taking everything. Then what you're doing? You're vomiting it out. Or you will entirely stop eating. You will have aversion with food will hate food. So you will have love-hate relationship in bloomia. Like you will, you want to eat it, you will eat it, and then you will hate it because you ate it, and then you will. Then these people who have uh, negative self body image, they have relationship issues, a lot of relationship issues, not just with other people, but with their own self. Like they have negative relationship with their own body. They don't uh, see it as it is, but see it. Then they, they, they cannot set boundaries with other people. They, they cannot say no to other people because they feel they, they lack somewhere. They, they are behind some way and they have to like impress other. They need approval of other people in which they, they like lower their self, they won't care about their self, and then it will lead to self-harm tendency. Like many people come with cuts and uh, they will take risky, they will do risky behavior uh, to, to get uh, hurt because they feel they don't deserve anything. They deserve pain because they're not good enough. And this overall changes the personality of the people. Your self-image changes the personality. You become, um, sometimes uh, these people with a negative body image are perfectionist. They see things in black and white. They become sensitive to people's comment. They, they become obsessional towards their body, towards the defects. Then uh, they have, like, they, they become, they, became, uh, they, they ask for approval each time because they have fear of being abandoned, being left alone because of how they see themselves. And then they have killed why they are the way they are. If we have to work on this, we have to work on all the areas of self-care, which consists of physical, psychological, emotional, spiritual, personal, and professional. In case of physical, you should feel safe in your body, in your home. Have regular medical care, check up, eat healthy, exercise. You should have it Set routine. You should have a good appetite, eating healthy, controlling your portion, have enough sleep, enjoy your holidays, go for massage, for uh, warm baths, for walks, mindful walks, 
turn off your phone. Be with yourself. Learn to be with yourself. Psychological. Psychologically, sometimes we have a blind spot. Like if uh, um, a car is moving towards us and it's on the back door of your car while you're you cannot see that car until you put a small mirror on your uh, side mirror because there is a blind spot. Similarly, we have blind spot to the psychological problems. So that's why we need help of a clinical psychologist who act like those mirror who help you see your psychological uh, blind spots or psychological problems. Because sometimes we tend to deny, we tend to not accept the problems, which are real problems. Instead of working on the problem, on the real problem, we start diverting those problems on our body, on our self-image. So this is lack of problem-solving skills. So we have to work on problem-solving skill rather than punishing our body for the things and considering it worse instead of focusing on the problem we are facing at right at that time. We should be more self-reflective, self-aware, know about our own strengths and needs, know about our like health, Go for therapy, go for social support, have like relax outside, uh, write a journal to know your own thoughts, feelings, perception and your exact situation. Because sometimes while thinking, we are thinking negative. According to researchers, 98% of thoughts are negative. Only 2% are positive. So most probably we will be thinking negative. And if we write them down, we can like logically see it because it's in a written form and we can see it's re related to reality or it's not related to reality. It's logical or illogical. Then you can read books. Then if you need help, go ask help, seek help. Asking for help is not a bad thing. Then emotionally, because emotions are natural and uh, they, they cannot be stopped, but they can be managed. If you feel like crying, cry. If you feel like laughing, laugh. Love yourself, care about yourself. Share your emotions with the people who, who are very close or if you need help, who into a clinical psychology because if you keep your emotions in you according to the fried if you deny your emotions they come out but in an uglier form in an outburst in a fight so it's better to vent out your emotion to accept them it's okay to feel pain it's okay to feel sad because life is not constant the only constant thing is change. We are changing. Everyone is changing. Um, our physique is changing with age. So we have to accept. We should be self-compassionate. We should give ourselves positive self-talk. We should be thankful. We should say ourselves, I love you. And the most important thing is buy gift for yourself. Because we all want others to appreciate us. What about appreciating yourself? Mostly, whenever people come to me, I ask, do you appreciate yourself? Never. Do you buy yourself? No, really. Why? It's your birthday. Why are you waiting for others to give you gifts? Why the first gift shouldn't be from yourself? Then practicing forgiveness engage in social activities. Then if we talk about spiritual, get connected, connected to your, connected to nature, appreciate, meditate, go for yoga, play with children, watch sunset, forgive yourself, volunteer in good things. Then if we talk about personal self-care, 
you need to relax. Do things which makes you feel happy. Some, some enjoy the warm tea. Some, some people like cooking. Some people like writing. Some people like to learn new things for it. Make friends, make new connections. Spend time with your family. Plan your short and long-term goals, but your goal should be realistic. Then in professional life, you have to set your boundaries. Take time for lunch. Keep work at work. Don't take it home. Get support from your colleagues when you need. Plan for your careers. Participate in Learn to say no. It's very important. If, if you cannot say no, then you will be always overburdened by things. And in all of this, as I said, CBT, according to the researchers, shows that it, it just don't help you change your thoughts. Actually, it changes your brain and your nervous system. So seek professional help if you need. Because if you cannot love yourself, if you cannot love your body, you cannot move towards self-growth, become a better version of yourself because you will be focusing on things which are not real, which are not related to you. If you're comparing yourself to other people, you're being unfair to yourself because you are different individual. And even if you're comparing yourself with the same age person, still he's in a different phase of life. He lives in a different house. He has different eating pattern, different sleeping pattern. It cannot match you. Be yourself, be healthy, exercise, eat healthy, make real targets of your body, not unrealistic targets. Like if, if someone is underweight and still you want to lose your fat on your legs, why? If you're underweight, you need to gain weight. Be realistic about who you are and how you are. And stop, because situations are not under our control. Other, what other people say, do like people have negative view or comments about you, that doesn't define you. You're not that person, what they are saying. You're the one who feel how you are. So you have to move towards physically and mentally healthy life. And this is only the key to successful life. Be realistic in your goal. Be exact about what you want. If there is a problem in situation, don't divert or deny that situation and move towards your body image. Don't project those problems on your body. That's unfair. Deal with those situations, those problems, not harming yourself, making unrealistic goal for yourself. And if you have healthy body and healthy mind, like you are emotionally healthy and physically healthy, you can have a good quality of life. Otherwise, it will affect your academic, social, psycho, career, and even quality of life. So be positive about yourself. Your body is helping you so much. It's it's taking you everywhere. Your legs are taking you everywhere you do. If, if your body needs time out, give it time out. If your body is maintaining everything, why don't you take care of your blood pressure, your cholesterol level? Focus on those things, healthy patterns. And if you focus on those healthy, realistic things, what will happen? You will have a good, better body image and better like physique and health. So that's it from me. Thank you so much.
and thank you. Thank you so much, Zoima. Thank you so much. You touched upon a wide range of topics relevant to body image. You spoke about cognitive body therapy, behavior therapy, positive self-talk, positive body image. You touched upon negative body image. You gave us various tips on how we could improve our management of our body systems. But most of all, I want to thank you for that single slide on self-care. I thought that was excellent. It went beyond the topic of obesity and it went and it touched each one of us in different ways. You spoke about self-care from the physical aspect, from the professional, personal, spiritual aspect, the emotional aspect and the psychological aspect. Thank you so much for your profound knowledge in these areas. A great lesson in life. Thank you so much. Uh, I can see through your session, there were several uh, questions that were raised and I now request uh, my colleague, Dr. Wilku, to kindly coordinate the questions from our audience to Dr. Zoiba. Thank you, Professor. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, Mr. Zoiba Ami, for a wonderful session. Really, like Professor said, that slide was the complete summary of your session. It was wonderful, really wonderful. So generally, we come across uh, many questions uh, regarding uh, weight loss or any disease management. People used to say, I am doing uh, what doctor has suggested me, but I'm not able to maintain it. That is the biggest uh, concern for everyone, most of them. So you have uh, mentioned many things to how to uh, tackle that. So let's start with the question first. Nirmala has asked, you have mentioned about the body shaming. Is it, this is very common in young girls especially, and how to manage it. You have mentioned how to tackle it and uh, what the body shaming is. And again, she is asking, maybe uh, she's having this uh, for someone or a close person. So what exactly uh, is the management for body shaming? Look, uh, like any other problem, there is each and every problem, psychological problem. So there might be many factors leading towards body shame, towards mm. unrealistic perception of self, body, uh, body image. Like for example, some people bullying, so there may be some traumatic events, there might be uh, some like problem solving, lack of problem solving skill, lack of communication skills, which we tend to project on our body image because we are not dealing with the exact problem we are having. We project it on the body image. So for this, uh, I would say that individual sessions work well because you have to first explore what is the main reason why, why you are putting all the things on your body, why you are ashamed of your body. Is it realistic or unrealistic? Like your body is like, if you feel fat, are you really overweight? So we have to understand why it's happening to tackle with it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the second question Azan is asking, anorexia and nervosa, you mentioned in the uh, beginning, Anorexia nervosa is similar to the known psychological behaviors in which person is very careful about eating and uh, same time preventing the weight gain. In weight management, if we talk about the obesity management, is it good or bad of having this type of psychology? Um, uh, anorexia nervosa is a problem. It's an eating disorder in which the person slowly, completely quit eating. They just focus on exercising. 
that's not healthy. Even nutrition won't say you to quit eating. They will suggest to you things like your body should be having. Like if you need more protein, you should take more protein. If you need more fat, you should be taking more fat. But anorexia nervosa is a negative self body image in which person quits eating. They stop eating. They, they spend all day with just one cup of tea and they exercise for four hours to, uh, to take out the effect of that cup of tea. So it's, it's a disorder. It's a psychological disorder, eating disorder in which a person quits eating. But there are healthy ways to maintain to maintain, to reduce weight, if you have a, a like weight problem, you should have a consistent behavior. You should be consistent with what you're doing, what your nutritionist has suggested you. It is not a matter of one day or two days. It's a lifelong, it's a change for a lifelong. You have to change your portions. You have to Look what you are eating, what's in your plates. There is enough protein, there is enough vegetables, there is enough fats, there is how much carbs you should be consuming. Balanced diet. And it should not be for like one or two months. It should be lifelong. And you have to be consistent on it, to maintain it. And you have to be like really motivated in that. You have to appreciate the changes you see or the body you get because of that diet. You should appreciate yourself. Self-appreciation and self-positive uh, talk is very important to keep yourself motivated. Others' approval, sometimes you get others' approval, sometimes you won't. But what about yourself? Sometimes we say ourselves negative. Someone, if someone says something negative to us, you're fat. They will go say once and go. That's it. But what are you going to do about it? You're going to think one minute, 10 times, two minutes, 20 times. In a year, it's a lot. And that person made you feel bad for once. But in 24 7, how much bad you can make yourself feel is more important. So one positive self-talk can make you feel high. Negative self-talk can make you feel low. And that can be your motivating force also in maintaining your weight and positive uh, body image. Yeah, that's a wonderful answer. Uh, Simi has asked, can Lumia lead to losing weight? And can it be considered good? See, well, many of the times we uh, come across people saying, okay, okay I'm very foodie, but still I want, uh, want to maintain my weight. So I eat, I enjoy my food, and then I vomit it out. So isn't that good? It's a, it's a similar type of question. Can uh, Bloomia leading uh, to lose weight, and is, is it considered good? No, All are not. similar questions to psychological impact. It's not good. It's not good because you're, you will have guilt. You will enjoy food. That's love relationship with the food. You will enjoy. But what after that? You will have a lot of guilt. lot of negative self talk Why I did it. This was a very bad decision. Um, I'm not good enough. Um, I cannot. Which, which will. Uh, like. Uh, which is not good for your self-esteem. It lowers your self-confidence. And your sense of control. Like you feel. Oh I'm. I, I cannot control myself. You have to eat everything, but in portions. Avoiding or stopping everything makes you feel craving for those food, not just physically, but psychologically also. If you, are, if you want to eat sweet, eat sweet, but don't like stop entirely. And then when you see something sweet, you just keep eating. And you just want to eat all the sweets. That's worse than having a, like a routine. Like I can have a bite of a sweet thing. 
that's okay because then psychologically you won't crave for it otherwise you will have a greater craving and vomiting don't help that that worsens your self confidence and your sense of control i cannot control Uh, there is one interesting question. Akhil has asked: Obese people tend to have low confidence in social appearing, like what you were talking about the body shaming. How does it affect the personality? The, the person start becoming isolated. They they stop. Uh, they they don't have good communication skills. They they have fear of being abandoned. So that's why they will uh, they will tend to have boundaries. They won't. Uh, mingle with the people because if they will, they they will feel they are at risk to be left alone. They they feel depressed about it. Yeah, true. Ah, uh, there is one question from Kasana. For obese people, is it advisable uh, for going for intermittent fasting? So generally, uh, theoretically, this question is not related to. Uh, the topic you are talking about but uh, may i modify this does fasting improve your mental health and will yes. it uh, if, uh, help the obese people too fasting yes it it affects according to nutritionists yes intermittent fasting do help in reducing weight and plus when you reduce weight or uh, you you are consistent with any plan you feel motivated because you feel lighter you can feel that changes in your body and then if you are consistent you will be motivated you will have more confidence when you achieve your realistic goal that's why setting realistic goals are very important if i am like uh, overweight 10 kg more i cannot plan like i should reduce 10 kg in one week It's unrealistic goal, and that demotivates me. That will demotivate me. That will lower my self confidence. Look, I did so much, but I cannot reduce ten kg because I'm setting up a false or unrealistic goal for myself. So set it realistic. Maybe for one month, I won't even reduce a uh, like one kg because I have to be consistent to see the results. Change, no one has a magical wand, right? So this, but there are no magical solution. We we have to be consistent about our and consistent and realistic about our goals in every aspects yeah. of life. True, true, true. Uh, I think uh, whatever questions I'm receiving on my emails and WhatsApp also are all similar questions which you have already addressed. so from my side it's thank you very much from uh, for the answer uh, professor over to you please uh obesity is truly uh, and after listening to azoyba uh, i believe this to be even more true that obesity is truly a multi discipline uh, subject now i truly appreciate uh zoyba's handling of several aspects of the psychological component of obesity bulimia for example anorexia anorexia nervosa for example she very clearly explained that these are body image situations uh Uh, but there were also questions relating to fasting which is uh, certainly a nutritional topic and body shaping which is certainly an exercise related topic and so i'm truly grateful for the entire team uh, that we have in rack hospital our nutritionists our exercise specialists and physiotherapists our psychologists like zoima uh 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 physicians including dr wilku for helping us to manage this subject zoyba thank you so much for an enlightening and in many ways for giving us a lesson in how to manage life 
Thank you so much for your session. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Wilku for putting together all the questions in his own inimitable way, covering the technical aspects uh, the way he so aptly does. I'd like to thank uh, the IT team, which is working in three different locations. Uh, this webinar is coming to you from three different locations. We have Zoiba sitting in Rack Hospital. Uh, we have Dr. Wilku, for example, sitting in his office. You have me sitting in my office. And we have our audience sitting in different parts of the UAE and also in different parts of the world. I'd like to thank our uh, uh, professionals for helping us to manage this webinar. And last but not least, friends, thank you so much uh, to our dear audience that comes out every week to listen to uh, our subject on different aspects of weight loss and obesity. Now, next week we have uh, the topic of childhood obesity. One would imagine that children who are young and growing would not have a problem with obesity, but we are beginning to see that our children probably have a bigger problem with obesity than we adults have, especially since advertising, fast food, commercial foods, etc., uh, are so rampant. But we have a specialist, uh, Dr. Vishal, a pediatrician, the head of the department who will be talking to us on this subject. So parents who would like to know more about childhood obesity, please do join us next week, uh, that would be on the 10th of March at 11 a.m. UAE time. With that, friends, thank you so much and have a great day.